Budget 2023. 2024. Highlights. Amrit Kal Ka Budget. Our nation has been recognized as a bright star despite the global economic slowdown. India is currently the fifth largest economy and has a projected growth trajectory of 7%. India's per capita income has doubled to over rupees 1.97 lakhs. The budget functions as the Satrishi 7 priorities to guide us through. The Amrit Kal 1. Inclusive development 2. Reaching the last mile 3. Infrastructural investment 4. Unleashing the potential 5. Green growth 6. Youth empower 7. Financial sector The fiscal deficit target for FY23 is retained at 6.4%. The same is estimated at 5.9%. For FY24, capital expenditure increased by 33% to rupees 10 lakhs crores, which is higher than the rupees 7.5 lakhs crore budgeted in the previous year and the highest on record. The government has allocated rupees 5.94 lakhs crores to the Ministry of Defence, which is 13% more than last year's budget, allocation signifying the government's focus on domestic manufacturing. Railways received its highest ever capital outlay of rupees 240 lakhs crores. A national data governance policy will be rolled out to encourage innovation, research, and enable access to anonymized data. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana 4.0 will be launched to skill the young population. Amrit Piri within the next three years, the scheme will cover new age courses for industry 4.0 like coding, AI, robotics, mechatronics, IoT, 3D printing, drones, and soft skills. National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme will be rolled out to provide a stipend support to 47 lakhs youth in three years kyc procedure to be simplified further and to be made a common business identifier the scope of digilocker will be expanded to enable better innovative fintech domestic tourism will be promoted with new schemes such as deco apna desh and swadesh darshan scheme for theme-based tourism msma credit schemes will be revamped through an infusion of rupees 9000 crores in the corpus this will enable additional collateral free guaranteed credit of rupees 2 lakhs crores incentives to ifsc relocation of funds to ifsc has certain tax exemptions the deadline for relocation is extended till 31st march 2025 one time new small saving scheme mahila samman savings certificate to be made available for two years up to 2025 scheme to allow a maximum deposit of up to rupees 2 lakhs yields 7.5 percent interest the monthly income scheme limit double to rupees 9 lakhs rupees 15 lakhs per joint accounts senior citizen savings scheme limit double to rupees 30 lakhs with the objective of promoting timely payments to msma proposed to insert a new clause h in section 43b to provide that any sum payable by the assessee to msma shall be allowed as a deduction only on actual payment integrated it portal to be established for ease of reclaiming shares and dividends under iapf amendments relating to direct taxes in the case of the new tax regime a 100 percent rebate on taxes is available to individuals whose total income does not exceed rupees 7 lakhs the new tax rates as per new tax regime are 1 income slab of rupees 3 lakhs no tax levied 2 income of rupees 3 lakhs to rupees 6 lakhs 5 percent tax rate 3 income of rupees 6 lakhs to rupees 9 lakhs 10 percent tax rate 4 income of rupees 9 lakhs to rupees 12 lakhs 15 percent tax rate 5 income of rupees 12 lakhs to rupees 15 lakhs 
20% tax rate above rupees 15 lakhs income 30% tax rate there are no changes in income tax slab rates as per old regime maximum surcharge rate reduced from 37% to 25% for those who opted for new tax regime resulting in a reduced maximum marginal rate to 39% as against 42% capital gains investment of proceeds into residential property exemption limit under section 54 and 54f is restricted to rupees 10 crores presumptive taxation scheme for businesses increased to rupees 3 crores from rupees 2 crores and for specified professionals increased to rupees 75 lakhs from rupees 50 lakhs where cash is less than 5 percent tax exemption limit on leave and cashment on the retirement of non-government salaried employees increased from rupees 3 lakhs to rupees 25 lakhs life insurance policies other than ulip income will be exempt only from those policies issued after 1st april 2023 with aggregate premium up to rupees 5 lakhs relief to startups in carrying forward and setting off of losses 51 percent shareholding is relaxed and carry forward timeline increased to 10 years from 7 years startup eligible for exemption date of incorporation extended up to 1st april 2024 with the objective of promoting timely payments to msma proposed to insert a new clause h in section 43b to provide that any sum payable by the assessee to a msma shall be allowed as a deduction only on actual payment tds extended for payment of interest on listed securities in dematerialized form transfer or redemption of market linked debentures are considered as short-term capital gains lower tax rate of 15 percent applicable for new manufacturing cooperative societies is introduced new it returns to be rolled out to facilitate user-friendly tax returns any winnings in online games will be taxable at 30 percent and tds will be deducted at the time of withdrawal or the end of the financial year whichever is earlier on net winnings reintroducing joint commissioner appeal as a first appellate authority to reduce the burden on the existing commissionerate offices amendments relating to indirect taxes reduction of basic customs duty on goods other than textile and agriculture from 21 percent to 13 percent import of raw materials required for the manufacturer of lithium-ion cells used in batteries of electric vehicles will now be exempted from customs duty dealers under the composition scheme shall be eligible to supply goods through e-commerce operators input tax credit related to corporate social responsibility expenses incurred by companies as for the companies act 2013 have been marked as ineligible under section 17 5 fa of the central goods and services tax act 2017 gst return or annual return is not allowed to be filed after three years from the due date of return raising the minimum threshold for launching prosecution under gst from rupees 1 crore to rupees 2 crores except for the offense of issuance of invoices without a supply of goods or services or both